Okay, uh, also on the um, in the wiring loom you'll see there's numerous ground cables in this instance, there's four, most of them are four. Um, these should be connected to the engine block and uh, individually, not, don't connect them all, you know, back here um, where the ECU is, don't connect them all back at one point, solder them and then run one extra, one cable down to the engine block run them all as individual cables all the way back to the same point on the engine block and then get, um, terminate all four into um, one lug and solder onto a lug or uh, crimp but soldering is best because you get a better join um, but it's very important they're all done individually not con not con cut off and connect to one wire and run to the chassis or the engine or whatever they must all go individually to the engine block Also in the wiring loom you've got um, the injector banks 1 and 2 um, on most of the ECUs you've got the white wires injector bank 1 and the uh, purple wires injector bank 2. Um, a lot of people ask how do you, how, which cylinders do you wire to which? Well I would connect uh, on a four cylinder with a foreign order of um, one four three, t uh, sorry, one three four two. And I'd connect um, banks one and four together uh, to inject a so cylinder one and cylinder four to inject bank one, and um, uh, cylinders three and two to uh, inject bank two. Uh, that's how I'd do it. Um, it doesn't really make much difference, to be honest, but a lot of engines do tend to prefer that on a six cylinder or an eight cylinder um, on a V6 for instance and a V8 it, it just connect all the odd banks and all the even banks so uh, all the odd banks are good to say uh, bank one and all the even banks to inject to bank two and the same on a um, on a six, another six cylinder just look at the far in order if it's a straight six and um, go uh, you know uh, just pick the uh, cylinders that are opposite. Okay, you've got um, in the wiring loom, you've got a screened cable. This is the trigger set, uh, input. Um, so it's off your crank sensor or hall sensor or um, EDIS module, the PIP signal in from the EDIS module if you run EDIS. Okay, now um, that's a screen cable. The two inner cores, blue and red. And then you've got the screen. Screen don't connect the screen uh, to ground. That's grounded in the EC at the ECU end in the 37 pin plug. These are the two cables you're worried about. This is best to just wrap it together and clip it off and insulate the end like this one here and find the end like that one there. Maybe insulate some tape should look a bit neat than that, but. This is a crank sensor, so it's got two wires come off, but they're the two wires that we build to the your trigger input on a crank sensor. You know, which way round depends on the manufacturer. And um, if it was needed module, 12 pin needed module you're using, you only connect the red wire. The um, blue wire is ground, it's ground at the mega square end, and um, that's only used. Uh, on VR sensors, hall sensors and the like. If you're using a 12 pin EDIS module you can use the red wire and that's the PIP input. So the PIP output from the output from the uh, 12 pin module, EDIS module, goes to that red wire and you can just cut off the blue wire. On a trigger sensor like uh, on a um, VR sensor, crank sensor like this is, forward example, um, you connect them two wires to them. Okay, other basic um, it, uh, requirements really are uh, resistive spark plugs, uh, basically NGK spark plugs with an R in them are resistive. Um, I'm not sure about other manufacturers, but um, I always recommend NGK anyhow. But so uh, resistive spark plugs, you'll also need if you've got run any coil packs and the like um, directly off the mega squirt. So um, you run like a 4D this. Uh, Sorry, a, a 
ZTEC coil pack, anything like that, um, where you're directly driving an ignition coil, you want the um, a capacitor that goes connects to the 12 volts feed that goes to the ignition coil. That's um, the Ford version that I'm using on my car. Um, there are various other uh, different versions of it, but and that's bolted to the engine. And uh, there's just one wire coming off of it which goes to the uh, 12 volt feed to the ignition coils, the actual 12 volt feed on the ignition coils. Okay, and this is um, the engine block. All my grounds, as you can see, go back to the same point on the engine block or um, the same bolt. Um, I've got so many because I'm running COPS and single uh, sequential fuel and sequential ignition on this engine. Um, I can't get them all on the same lug, so I've got about three lugs there with all the wires soldered into um, sort of two or three lugs all up back to the engine block. Okay, and this is the map signal on the back of the v on the back of the Rover Plenum has the um, uh, pressure feed, uh, the uh, manifold pressure feed that feeds the fuel pr uh, pressure regulator, which in my case is an aftermarket one, and uh, I've just teed into that, as you can see there, I've just teed into that, and that runs down along here, and in, in through the bulkhead into where the um, ECU is, and uh, into the front of the ECU. So, um, but it's important to come off of the uh, manifold itself, not off the old. That's the old um, vacuum advance for the uh, distributor when it had one. When these engines, and um, that's not the point to uh, come off of because that's before the um, throttle butterfly. It's got to be after the throttle butterfly, so inside the plenum, and um, that's the same point where they take off the fuel pressure regulator manifold um, reference, so just tee into that, it's easy enough to use that point there.